But welcome back. Welcome back, listeners, viewers, to another extremely, extremely interesting topic, business leadership experts. I listened. I read your comments. I, I read the emails. I got the texts. I was able to bring him back. None other than the godfather of the NFL himself, Mr. Reggie, <laughs> Mr. Reggie Grant. <laughs> <laughs> the godfather of what? Not the, <laughs> the godfather of getting out, out of the $50 NFL. $50 million a year. <laughs> <laughs> Once you are out of the NFL, this is the man you need to talk to. Uh, but uh, you know, why is Reggie an expert in, in our topic today? Today, we're going to be talking about the NFL draft, and Reggie knows all about it. He was drafted uh, ninth round, I believe, Reggie, 1978. Correcto mundo. Uh, he went to the the New York Jets. Spent some time, spent some time with the Jets. Spent some time in the Canadian Football League. So we we have a man with us who knows what's going on. Because today we're going to be talking about some of the mess that we don't see, that the chaos that goes on behind the scenes. So by the time it gets to the viewer, all we see is the spit and polish of everything that has happened. But uh, Reggie is now the co-owner, co-founder of E sports reggie can you introduce for the the viewers and the listeners one more time what esports does actually it's esports instruction incorporated esports instruction.com under that uh, we have my consulting with ceos founders uh, in tech business all kinds of stuff athletes tech and business um, that's esi pitch we have several lanes we run work in lots of them with athletes of course we're in the esports sector in terms of helping that athletes and founders uh, facilitate that whole lane of, of esports and, and gaming and all that. We have athletes in, in uh, cannabis, which we have a big show in New York this week. We have athletes in art, we'll be showcase and highlight and work with athletes that are artists and all that, like Ed White, the 17 year NFL mm -hmm. vet, and Arnie Castell, the baseball player. We have um, NFTs by athletes, uh, NFTs by athletes.com. Uh, athletes in Cannabis, again, is in New York. <coughs> athletes in Art and ESI Pitch Athletes Tech and Business, where we do Shark Tank type events, and we consult with founders and CEOs. And so we work with a lot with the athletes. And up, But again, not only them, but other founders and CEOs in and, and multiple lanes, especially tech and uh, the cannabis sector and the whole ecosystem and all that kind of good stuff. So you can find everything at esportsinstruction.com. E or reginaldgrant.com reginald grant he's the only one out there folks and no, reggie, i'm not the only one out there but i own my space baby and, <laughs> <laughs> reggie you've got your your own show with is it arnie yes we do thursday the arnie and weekly podcast we talk about you know a lot athletes perspective on the world what's happening what's going on this and that and you know just uh, finding your right path and just kind of have a conversation with people. All right. It, it, it's a high energy show, uh, guys. I, I, I've watched it. I, I should say I've listened to it a few times. It's um, you don't need coffee. By the time you're done with those guys, you're not going to need your coffee. <laughs> Bouncing <laughs> off the walls. Uh, well, as I was saying, this segment, you know, tell me that the, this is business leadership experts, but tell me the NFL is not a business. It's one of the largest billion dollar organizations. They print their own money. They've got their own kingdom, you name it. And um, in this past week, as I said, hey, did your team draft who you thought they should have draft? Was there a particular player that you were following? You know, did they go as high as you thought they were going? Did they go right where you thought they should go? Did somebody slip that you had no idea and you're shocked was going to slip. So what we're going to do, we're going to talk about that behind the scene, as I say, chaos, stuff that goes on. So Reggie, let me start from the very beginning. Let's say that I'm a, uh, a college athlete. I'm, I'm coming out my junior, my senior year, whatever it might be. First thing I'm assuming I got to do is find an agent to represent me. How do I go about selecting the right agent? Well, just like anything else, when you're a high-profile guy at a college, they're coming at you like uh, pretty girls, right? They're, they're, there's many, many, many uh, sizes, shapes, colors, configurations that you have the opportunity to choose from uh, because you're exposed, you're highlighted, um, you're probably going to be some kind of a star at some level. Uh, everybody is somebody. 
Uh, so the agents are contacting you consistently. And now with the NIL thing, that's really uh, somebody can have an agent and not even be eligible for the draft. They can just have somebody that represents them for their name, image, likeness. That's the NIL thing that was passed last year by the Supreme oh. Court unanimously. You know, we never do anything unanimously at the Supreme Court, but the NIL was that kind of deal because many of them are collegiate athletes and understand the dynamics of what's going on. So the athletes are now uh, garnering agents or agents are contacting them as young as high school because they can represent them for the name wow. and whiteness. And then it proceeds to, you know, you start with 10,000 or 10 million kids play, you pop more in football or youth football, you got two or 3 million play high school football. You have only 470,000 kids or student athletes at the collegiate level. Uh, you know, a good number of those are going to be football because it's the big sport, the big money sport, uh, even at the big thing levels where they're not, um, the big time schools, it, it is normally the biggest revenue driver for most of the, the institutions. Uh, so you, you have, um, you know, 100,000 kids, 120 of the 400,000 playing football, and then you turn around and, and uh, each year, now they can go as a junior in, in college, uh, whenever that or equivalent, uh, or senior. And so you have about 20,000 or so that are eligible when I was, uh, young and it was about 7,000 now because they can go as a junior, it's probably closer to 20. And you have to realize the only pick 232 or something like that, seven, seven rounds times 32 teams. So it's a small number that actually have an opportunity and another 200 are going to be signed, um, you know, free agents and undrafted free agents, they call them after the, the draft, right? So they have their whole, whole, grading system set up and you're going down the list and trying to get bodies and figure out you know who's going to be that one that comes up that they got for nothing that can come on and be a performer and maybe become a, a star and it does happen the odds are you know it's point zero zero three percent of, of uh, the population that has become a professional athlete in, in the first place good night <laughs> the odds are not good <laughs> <laughs> I was jotting down some notes here, Reggie, as, you, as you're kind of going through this, that essentially there's going to be about 20,000, and we're just talking the NFL, 20,000 athletes who are going to be eligible for, for the NFL. Is that right? I mean, there's seniors that are declaring they're going to play or try to play professionally. Yes. That is insane. 300. Now everyone knows about the combine in Indianapolis. You go and you show your, you show what you have. Only three hundred are going to be out of the twenty thousand. Three hundred are going to be <laughs> invited to the combine. Yes. And then from the three hundred, there's only going to be two hundred thirty-two drafted. Well, uh, yeah, Roughly. somewhere between two hundred twenty. I think maybe two hundred twenty-four to two hundred thirty-two, something in that. It's a small number, it's, right? They're only going to draft. There's only thirty-two teams. Thirty two first round picks 32 second round picks it's a small number compared to the to the people that want to play football oh my word so even with those numbers reggie so now you know I, i'm going around and i'm trying to find the right agent so what i'm thinking i'm understanding from you is that there are different level of agents no disrespect to agents out there but there's different levels of agents who have the inside track. So if I'm a top 10 prospect, that agent is going to be different than let's say, you know, the feedback I'm getting, you know, on reports on me is, Hey, look, you know, Mike, your, your, your 40 yard dash was uh, five minutes and 32, <laughs> 32 seconds. We're looking for you to go maybe third, fourth, fifth round. That's a different type of agent altogether. Is that right? Yes, you need to sign somebody for you. Uh, <clears throat> again, Lee Steinberg, um, which we have known since 96 or something like that, is the godfather. He's really the godfather of agents, right? The first mm -hmm. super agent was Lee. And, uh, you know, he was just saying, I think he's had 40 or 48 years in the NFL draft that he's had over 60 or 70 or 80 first round picks and about nine were the first pick overall. So he's a beast and he understands that. But he, you know, again, works with quarterbacks. Um, Mahomes is his and, you know, some of those high profile players. Mm -hmm. 
and, and, and other very, very, very high profile. Again, there's only 32 going to be the first pick of a team. 32 guys where they expect them to come in, perform at a high level and be a success and add value to that team. Otherwise, they're called a bust. Nobody else is called a bust but the first round pick. Right. So, yes, it's it's uh, if you're projected to be in the mid rounds, then you have a, a different kind of agent. You need different kind of servicing. You need conversations uh, differently than, you know, you can call the owners of the team, not just the general manager or the president or the head of scouting or the head of personnel. He can call, you know, Jerry Jones or when he has his parbies at the Super Bowl. Right. Jerry right. Jones show up with the van, but, but not to the van, but a bus, you know. Right. Like the cowboy hole trappings and all that. And some of the other, other owners as well. So it's different levels. I have an associate that, that averages about 30 to 35 active players at any one time that he represents. And most of his guys are mid or lower round draft picks. And he's picked to help the couple of guys that have went on to become uh, all pro and, and even in the Hall of Fame. Uh, so, you know, there is a glimmer of hope out there for somebody to live the dream. But the mountain is high. This is Mount Everest. You're getting it. Just to be in the game, you know, you're scaling pretty, pretty tall waters. Well, so, it, so it, you know, after I've selected someone, and uh, you know, like you said, you know, th those first round, those top agents, the agents who have direct contact to owners, not just the GMs, not just scouts. The general, but the you know the GMs as well as the actual owners themselves. That's an elite group altogether. Yes, right? that's an elite group. That, that's yes. that that's very few who will yes. even take their calls. Yes, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you can get through the keepers at a gate, and there's about ten levels. And there's about ten levels, and then there's everybody else. All right. So, um, so let's say I, I've found an agent based on draft uh, draft proje projections. Uh, maybe they highlight, you know, Mike, this is who I've signed before in the past. This is what round they went in. This is what, you know, showing me their portfolio of players, what they've done before in the past. I select a guy, all right? Now, what should my agent be doing for me? Let's say I, I played in, in, a, in a bowl game. What should my agent be doing for me after I've selected him up into the draft? Again, he, he's going to be your face right just like going to court and and and, and you don't have a lawyer you want you want somebody that's going to be your voice that's going to speak for you on your behalf that's going to elevate you that's going to position you to answer questions if there's questions help you get and do off the training the pre-combine pre training uh, they'll usually pay for that they'll give you some upfront gas money so that you can survive and thrive during that time period between the end of that season and when you sign with them and, and the, the actual draft or the, the, the season starts or not the season, the season of the negotiation process starts, right? So if you were drafted, now you're in negotiations on your contract. For your first round, there's a certain tier. Your second round, there's a certain tier. And it's go round by round by round. So my buddy got is, is, is number 10 and I'm number 11, then I'm gonna ask for X amount of dollars. If I'm number 17, Right, so there's, there's that that higher you know that stratosphere, right? Stratum, mm -hmm. and, and at each level. So this third round pick gets this, then I'm going to try to negotiate. I might be a third round pick that was projected to be higher, or some for some reason I'm lower. I still might get better money than somebody's job to hire than me. The art of negotiation is critically important. Um, but what the agents get paid is set. Right, if whether it's in the NFL, NBA, or whatever, is set by the league, which you can actually charge the guy. They make their money on helping them do ancillary things as well in the marketing and all that, where they can make more money. Okay, so he's working phones, he's making contacts. Now, he should be. He should. Okay, that's an important point. <laughs> he, sh he should be. I want to come back to that a, a little bit later. All right. He's supposed to be. <laughs> he's supposed to be. He's supposed to be. Um, now, and now you mentioned something in here that the agent, if they've got the, they should be able to have connections preparing me for either a combine to get invited to a combine or my own pro day. 
but they should have some connections for me to get prepared. So my question now is, as an athlete, what am I doing? Hey, I played my final game. I got my agent. You're What's the big You're working deal out. Then? You're busting your butt. You're getting in shape. You're getting bigger, faster, stronger. You're maintaining and trying to get better physically, whatever your weaknesses are, so that you can go out there and perform. Again, if you're invited to the combine, to the combine. And again, we say there's 20,000 guys that are eligible. There's going to be 300 or so at the combine. There's another 500 that think they should be at the combine or a thousand or whatever uh, that won't get an invitation. And they'll have pro days around all the major schools and a lot of the minor schools where they ask scouts and from all the teams and they just travel around groups of them. And sometimes the general manager shows up or whatever, or the president of a team uh, uh, will show up at a pro day after, which is usually after the, the combine. So they go to combine, they all get together, they're watching everybody, can see everybody in one spot and everybody's talking and trading information and hiding information and trying to do the thing, evaluate people, evaluate them, not only in the physical play, but can you represent our team and stay out of trouble? Can I uh, depend on you? Just like a college coach's livelihood or is dependent on how many kids he can recruit and stay and stay eligible and help him on the field. So and stay out of trouble, right? And the same thing goes at the pro level. Shoot, you know, just like if you were applying to be an FBI agent or Secret Service, they're going to go back, 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 back into the depths of your, your history and your background. And, you know, elementary school, they might go as far back as that and have, have conversation with often, often at the high school level, right? That they'll show up at a high school and talk about your character, who you were, the, the good, the bad, and the ugly. It all bears on your opportunities, right? And it can have impact. Some teams will shy away from specific people because they had or did not effectively manage their social media, did not effectively manage their things, stay out of trouble, you know, having issues with girlfriends or, or fights at bars and, you know, uh, being aggressive is, is one of the major attributes of a professional football player, but you have to be able to channel that. You can't just go out and beat people up in the bar because they, you know, but messing with you, right? Now you got compounded issues. You see all the time kids get kicked off college teams. And sometimes uh, the colleges will circumvent the process that should, should happen and, and cover for guys, all kinds of things. And in my 40 years, I've seen everything and heard everything from guys getting DUIs and the cops letting them go and uh, to coaches calling them saying, you know, we, uh, Billy, Billy Joe, we need to, you know, just, you know, forget that and all kind of stuff. Oh, we're coming back. For some <laughs> we're going to come back with some of those stories, Reggie. So, <laughs> uh, behind the scenes is, uh, you know, it's just like politics. It's down and dirty. Everybody's got to win, baby. You know, in, in now that you say that, I my wife works at um, in the athletic department here at our local high school uh, in, in Vancouver, and there was a quarterback. Um, Garrett Grayson, I think was his name. I may be pronouncing it incorrectly, but he played at um, Colorado State. He set passing records for, at Colorado State, uh, you know, for the division. They had a winning record. And he was projected to be somewhere around the fourth and fifth. He later, I, I think he went to the Saints, but he wasn't a high, he wasn't projected to go, a, you know, third and above. But they were kind of surprised that a scout for, I think, the Rams, again, I'm, Maybe I shouldn't have said the team's name, but a scout showed up at the high school and they were asking a lot of questions they about do this kid. Due diligence. This is yeah. serious. Now, the, I remember, first round pick is going to receive, and football is not like other sports where they spread it all out. Football, you get your, your deal is your signing bonus, right? Football mm -hmm. signs a series of one year contracts. They don't sign a, a five year contract, they sign a series of one year contracts. So you get the signing bonus, your first round pick. Let's say you get 10 million bucks, right? Of course, you're only going to see five of that taxes and agents and, and, and state taxes and federal taxes and all that. So it's a high tax bracket, right? But you get 10 million bucks. That's your signing bonus. You might only make one or two million a year for those per year for those four years, right? Mm -hmm. So you have a $15 million contract, but you know, in essence, you got 10 million up front now. That with that second contract can often be where a guy elevates himself if he's performed. If he doesn't perform, they don't exercise their rookie option. Mm. It's so a that, big business, baby. It's big business. They're serious about their money. 
And remember, in football, you are the most expendable of commodities because somebody gets hurt every week, every week of the season. There are injuries that impact the team if somebody can't play and they got to play and play and they have five or six men on their practice squad and then they will bring in something. You know, I remember being in and they brought in about 20 guys. Kicker missed the kick. They brought in 20 kickers. That, on the Monday, there were 20 guys there. They was, they was looking at they didn't sign any of them. They waited a few weeks, you know, our guy survived uh, the wilderness, but they brought in 20 guys on Monday, right? There was a DBs. The DB got hurt, boom. They brought in 20 guys. Next, on Monday, there's 20 DBs or corners, right? Or DB, you know, when I was drafted, I was the fourth of five defensive backs picked. We had 17 defensive backs in camp. We had six safeties and 11, what was 11 corners. They kept three of the six safeties and three of the uh, 11 corners, and two of us were rookies, Bobby Jackson and myself. I had to call him today, as a matter of fact. I saw one of my teammates yesterday, Chris Ward, former first-round pick from Ohio State. Oh, okay. Now, and, and you were at this year's draft, not in the building, yes, but I you were at... In, I was physically in Las Vegas. Uh, what happens at, uh, at those events is the Players Association, uh, active and retired players... Uh, to have uh, events where we actually had a viewing party and, uh, you know, food and alcohol and all that. So we were able to sit up, post up a bunch of us, 50 or 100, whatever it was, uh, guys were from around the country there to watch the draft, you know, uh, have a good time and, and just, you know, have conversations with some old, old cronies and friends. And, and uh, well, yesterday, our, our University of Oregon uh, Hall of Famer and uh, Super Bowl champ Mario Clark and I played together at Oregon. So him and, and um, uh, his wife were there. And so I've known this since I was a kid, you know, 18 years old, 17 years old. Uh, we were talking here and Harold Jackson, the, the, the guy with 10,000 yards and Black College Hall of Fame and probably end up being in the Hall of Fame uh, was there. And Mars like, yeah, Harold, I remember you did one of them blind side blocks. You did, yeah, yeah, hit me so hard. And then they showed him about three times on a big screen in the Coliseum. So you have those kind of conversations. Like, I don't even realize, I didn't know where that was Harold Jackson. And they was like, they were laughing about that, joking, you know, about what, what happened on that play on the field of some many, many decades ago. But it, it's great to be in there again. I was at the draft, attended some, some events with uh, other people, uh, went to some draft parties, which are private parties with people uh, expected to get drafted and you know sadness and some people and happiness with everybody that did get drafted in the first second or third round and you know and then everybody else is at home pretty much waiting for the phone call mm. so it, <laughs> it, 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 yeah, high drama high intensity you imagine sitting there and you're waiting for your name to call and every 15 minutes the whole room is like there were 60 people in the room the whole room is like oh that is that <laughs> and, then, and then the next time, oh, so it was, you know, it's a roller coaster. And then they call your name, and everybody in the room goes crazy. Ah! <laughs> and all the emotions are let out, and all the frustration, anger, and bitterness. And, and you know, he's just excited to have an opportunity. So now you, you mentioned a couple of things. There. There's a lot to unpack. I'll see if I can get this side of it. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, to kind of bring this up to speed here, you know, my, my agent should be talking to people. Uh, you know, I should be working my butt off like this season is going to be starting. I should be at a facility where I've got trainers, um, you know, working yeah, on. Yeah, so they'll you know, pay for you to go to these training facilities. One of my associates is an NFL agent and they also represent golfers and baseball players. And they have a complete facility uh, underneath their offices, but they represent 90 NFL guys and and 50 or 100 baseball and 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 and, and uh, golfers. So they have a complete floor with mm -hmm. a whole training, whole basketball court, you know, all the training stuff, the whole football field underneath their offices. Medical facilities, maybe? If there's oh, some yes. rehabbing? They have, they have the doctors for the rehab, all that. And, you know, the agent will pay for you to go and see a doctor if you have some medical problem or, or issue that needs to be. They should be taking care of that. If you have a problem that is of concern to the team, they should have their doctor they can send you to to check that out so that he can address what they're going to do, uh, uh, what your status is with uh, doctor to doctor. And if you don't do that, you know, you might be at a disadvantage or, or drop in the draft. 
because again, that's part of the communications. Because before every draft pick, the the the, the, the general manager, the person making the final decision, is going to say he's going to refer he's going to refer to the medical staff. What's the medical staff the status of this guy? Boom, 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 boom. Issues, concerns, thoughts, boom, boom, boom. The doctor's going to give their. They have a whole war room. It is literally like a war room where they're going and discussing all this. You got dozens of people in there. And they're all worried about that one draft pick. Mm. So, so that's where some of that signing bonus goes to. As you said, a guy gets $10 million in a signing bonus. Some of it, of course, goes to taxes. But then some of it has got to be you know, back-ended to you know, some of the facilities that your agent has signed you, you know, has, has yeah, set you up with, those, right? Some of those training expenses. You know, LeBron... Or, or Russell Wilson uh, allegedly spent a million dollars a year just in health and wellness and, and, and managing their health. So they're getting the best of the best of the best. So they're putting them in world-class places. So yes, that would could erode some of your your up front, your funds that you received. Yes, you're paying for that in the end. The actual actually, actually pays for that. They okay. might fund it for you, but on the back end, they're getting that money back. <laughs> so you, you said a couple of things here, and, and we kind of touched on an injury. Right. Um, without giving any specifics, we don't, you know, I, I don't think we're in a position to do that. Have, and I kind of go back, I'm going to use the marker, um, quarterback from Alabama, Tunga Taraloa. He had an ankle injury. Uh, he had some concerns. It was hard, you know, he, he seemed like every year for a couple of games he was getting banged up when he did start, but he still goes in the first round. Um, he had a good agent. He had one of the elite agents. He chose the agent that was proactive in terms of telling his story to the teams. And you only need one team to pick you. <laughs> you only need one you to believe have, you. <laughs> right, exactly. So he had those conversations. They believed in him. They, they rolled the dice, right? But somebody mm-hmm. must have alleviated the concerns of the team, which happened to have been the Dolphins, to, to make him um, go that high in the draft. Okay. The agent so, did his job. So conversely, um, any 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 experiences from you know what you have all seen? All the time, all the time. I the guy's got an injury, all and he's supposed time. to go it first. All the time, and he slides, keeps sliding and sliding and sliding. Some and you hear this: there was concern the for this and that. What happened? What happened? So the agent didn't do the job. They didn't communicate the information to the people effectively. They did not communicate with the team, the general manager. They're betting ten million dollars on you. They're betting ten million dollars. If it, if you don't succeed, you you know you you're they're a bust and you're a bust. As a general manager, the whole scouting department is under scrutiny, right? Mm-hmm. You you know you every every draft, every general manager is, is manager is under scrutiny for what happens with that draft class. So if you go to if you're the management team, you go two or three. Um, drafts and they're terrible, then you're mm-hmm. probably going to be replaced. I think of with Matt McMillan in Detroit. He got replaced because, you know, he couldn't consistently have good drafts. That was his biggest concern mm-hmm. or, or, or biggest thing that they gave him a hard time about. Mm. And we don't know what really they gave him a hard time about in the back room, but that was a big thing because he didn't successfully draft. Most, many of his draft picks were bust. That means he picked the wrong guy. The first round guy, the first guy, is mission critical uh, for the, the, the scout team, scouts and the general manager and the president and all those people that selected that guy, right? Mm. And they have a list of busts, right? You don't, you don't, you know, the general manager does not want his guy on that list and his name associated with it. So you've got your general, you got your GM, and then you've got your head of scouting. Is that right? You got operations, you got scouting, you got scouts, you got, you know, you have a team of 25 people on that, just on that, per team. Hmm. So it, how many it, scouts in do you have per team, maybe? Life led the team. You probably get, no, between the scouting, the, that, whole, that whole segment of the staff, it's got to be 25 people. Hmm. Okay. It's All whole, right. It's so the whole department that's dedicated Right, because they got to send scouts all over the country. So you have a whole department that's dedicated to identifying, evaluating, grading, bringing all that information. Data is king in, in right. football, like every other sport now, or every other business now. Wow. Right. So 
they have a whole dedicated department. That's only thing is, is to find the right persons, the right okay. bodies, the right players that can play, mm -hmm. that can stay up, they stay healthy and stay on the field. If you're not available, you're not valuable. Availability is opportunity. Unavailability is get cut. <laughs> <laughs> Eventually, they're going to get rid of you. This is the NFL. <laughs> NFL, not for long. They're not messing around. People don't understand it. Average guy is not making pension. There's 20,000 professional football players that are played that are probably still alive. And there's uh, 7,000 are probably getting pension, maybe at, at the most, right? So your uh, average guy is the pension. You have to make pay three or four years to be vested, depending on the time frame you played. And the average guy is only going to pay 1.5 years. Hmm. People don't so, understand. So those guys that pay 10 or 15 years, that's an anomaly. Yeah. Jeez. Like, Side question here. Rick. Nobody to play. Side question. Rick. <laughs> Go ahead. Side question. Uh, you mentioned about some of the parties. Give me an idea how many people are in a party, what the cost of the party is, the emotions in that room that nobody sees. Remember, the cameras aren't on them until, you know. Yes, no, the cameras aren't on until they get drafted. So until they get drafted, everybody is like on, on needles and, and, and pins and needles, right? They're waiting. Ah. <laughs> Everybody's every time the guy is about to announce it, everybody in the room is just is just gets quiet. Oh dang, he just say his name again. I said, oh, you know, that's like oh, the whole air just evaluates off the room. So you're sitting there and you don't get drafted. And just imagine, I'm I've known children. I say children, young people. Uh, these are 21 year old men and then 22 and young people. But you know, old now. Um, that had parties with hundreds of people. And then mm -hmm. did not get drafted at all. <laughs> so how much how much is a party generally? Well, uh, maybe in this your past experience, how much are these parties if you're generally? A high cost? End guy, you could spend five to, to ten thousand dollars on that day. Five to ten grand on a party. Yes. Wow. That's you, if you're like in Vegas, you know, you're renting a suite. That's you know, that ain't free. Again, that's more money out of the signing bonus. So <laughs> <laughs> Yes, they're going to get that money back. <laughs> so, see all them new shiny suits they had on the first round, you know, they're going to get that money back. So, <laughs> so now we've got, you know, Reg, I don't know if you can share with us uh, any stories without being specific of some guys that you knew that were projected to go high and, you know, their agent didn't do the job that you think they should have. And they started to slip without naming names. I don't want to put you on the spot. It happens. Brother. It happens every draft, hmm. right? It happens every draft where somebody's sitting there and they're sad. That's the end of the day. Whether it's a first round or or a third rounder that, that ended up not getting drafted, there was all these people talk to you and da 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 because they're talking to everybody, right? So everybody's right. excited, expectations, and you know, hoping for that dream to be fulfilled, to have an opportunity to play professionally. Yeah. Right? That's the big thing. Yeah, everybody has that dream. So every draft, there's um, at least a dozen guys who don't go where they think they're going to go. At least mm -hmm. a dozen that don't go in that first half of dozen. And there's another, you know, 600 that thought they might have had a chance to get drafted, right? And the teams talk to all the guys. Everybody's getting a conversation, right? Um, mm -hmm. and, and then the reality sets in. And then again, so he drafted 220, 230 guys. And then another 200 to 300 are going to sign. If you'll notice, everybody signed a dozen free agent writers that were, that were not drafted. So they had, everybody only had up to seven people <laughs> if they didn't trade their drafts away, mm -hmm. right? So you mm -hmm. only got seven picks, right? So right. that's only seven guys. And then uh, they were signed another 10 to 20 guys as free agents to come in and compete and try to have an opportunity to make the team. So, so let's touch on something else, Reggie, because we talk about, you know, you've been sitting there waiting and waiting. Your name is not called seventh round. Mr. Irre Mr. Irrelevant gets called in the, <laughs> in the last round. Now, but I, I still feel I'm good enough to play. What happens after the draft, after the draft, because we hear about these guys get signed after the draft. What the hell is that all about? Well, again, everybody's been evaluated, so they have another ten to twenty guys 
that each team, if you go looking at all the news and all the, the sports stuff, just Google it, you know, who signed who after the draft. All the free agents, the undrafted, they'll call them undrafted guys. You have, you know, Steelers, I think, has 17 guys, right, that they sign in the next two days after the draft. This is Monday. So these guys are signed, you know, draft happened Saturday. <laughs> Sunday, not, they're, they're, they're signing contracts. They're ver verbally committed to contracts, but they're getting getting guys signed up, right? They're getting right. commitments and getting people signing on contracts, right? So you, you get, imagine your seven rounds are over. That means Sunday, you, your people are going to work. They're calling all over the country. And that's, uh, let's say you got 20 guys. It's another 600 guys that are going to get a chance to walk on and have practice and sign a pro contract. And again, there's only 1,800 jobs. There's about 15, 16, 1700 of them that are guaranteed. Wow. There's only going to be 100 to 120 new people changing over between the retirees and the people are, you know, just done. Um, mm -hmm. There's going to be about 100, maybe 100 new guys. Of all those 20,000 that were eligible, only 100, some years 150 guys are going to make this game. So after the draft is over, I'm now technically a free agent because I've declared I've turned in my paperwork. What type of a free agent draft Undrafted. is that after? Do I have to go to the first guy who calls it's me or, or is it not, different? You can go, you can negotiate with anybody you want. You might have five teams for you. Okay. And okay. then so you can figure out how you can negotiate your best deal. If you have an agent, the agent can help you facilitate that process. If you don't have an agent, you can facilitate that process. Um, you know what I'm saying? So there are everybody's still waiting. They're still, you know, still waiting to get that get the deal done. They're still waiting to facilitate it, right? They're, everybody, they're, they are prepared. The teams to start going to the next level. Okay, we drafted seven guys, but we need to sign another twenty because you know. Uh, we still got bodies and we still don't know who we miss. We still don't know that guy that might make the team and add value and help us to win a Super Bowl or become an All-Pro or become a Hall of Famer. Out of those unsigned guys, many of them went on to have, to have successful careers. So, and it's about competition now. This right. is a competitive space. These people don't play. I remember being a rookie. We were playing. The defensive back coach is the next guy that, that gets beat deep. Uh, I'm, I'm cutting. Guy got beat deep. The guy's running back toward us. The guy says, no, son. I said, the next person, you cut. Turn in your gear, get your bus ticket, and go sell some insurance. Next man up. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, on the field. Go home. Your career, your aspirations, what you've been doing since you were 12 years old is over. <laughs> There were no hugs? <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think so. Right, there's some four letter words coming from both sides. <laughs> <laughs> so so after the draft, if you're if you haven't been called, there's still hope in the undrafted oh, yes, free agency hope. pool. There's hope. Yes, you're in the, you're in the undrafted pool. Reggie, give give us a little bit of an education. What are some of the difference in the signing bonuses for maybe first round, second round, third round? So well, again, on. first round, you a quarterback, you might get fifteen million dollars up front. Bam, bang. Okay. <laughs> the other first round is you're gonna get you know eight, ten, fifteen, twelve. Right? It's real money nowadays. It's life changing money. It's yeah. grandchildren money if you do the right stuff. Right? Um, second round, you know, it could be. Uh, two to five, maybe in, in that range. Third round could be one to three or four or five. Uh, depends on who you are and what team you're with and how much they want you and all kinds of things. Uh, then you're dropping down pretty much to fourth. You're talking about maybe a half million to 750,000. Minimum contracts not now about 750,000. So the average guy is going to make about 1.2 million before taxes. <laughs> oh. So it's real the, money and, nowadays. When I play, we made 40 grand for the, I made 40 grand. Wow. Right? So that's 40 years ago though. So it's a whole different world. The you NFL. Real money. I'd have kept playing if I had a day to make that kind of money. Right. Because it's hard. It's painful. People don't, it's, it's very, you know, there's, there's a reason they get paid that money because it takes a, 
a level of expertise, a level to be able to do it on demand, right? Uh, a level of, of uh, genetic luck, mm -hmm. right? If you're genetically not predisposed to not being hurt and beat down and, and able to take the, the pounding and the, you know, I, I know many guys that have hips and knees and, and, and elbows and, and um, you know, a little dementia and Alzheimer's and all those things you could think of on a negative side um, are there. Wow. Now, it, Reggie, you said something. You said to be able to do it on demand. On demand, what, baby. What does that mean, on demand? Give me an example of something where, you know, you got to be able to do it now. 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 Uh, I was a uh, junior, I think, at the University of Oregon. Rich Brooks had come up from UCLA to become a new head coach. Uh, it was spring ball. I ran a 4 3 5 40. He snatches the watch from the assistant coach and says, do it again. And I went back and did it again. It's, uh, right it's, and, and then you know can you do it again i did it again so it's on demand can you perform that at a high level lots of people can run fast one time but performing it at a high level repeatedly that's you know the difference maker right and, and then or under the performing under the bright lights when the guys go to the combine and a guy mm -hmm. can't perform <coughs> not good so you might go from a first round prospect to an eighth round pick or not get picked at all because mm -hmm. you can perform at a combine. If so you're it, there, it, it, they're probably going to take a chance on you, but it happens. It, it's a it's a very, very, very competitive cutthroat. You are a commodity business. Uh, again, you could be at practice and, and you have a bad day or, or you had a bad game and they might bring in three offensive linemen that play your position or, you know, uh, just to try them out that, that morning, the next day. They're, you're practicing, you can see the three guys over there that, that could be your replacement. It's highly competitive. That's why, if you know, guys understand they can take that, that competitive nature into other things in their life and be successful. Wow. How would you guys like <laughs> to have a bad day at work and you look out in the lobby and there's two or three people who are ready <laughs> that they've called in for an interview <laughs> Exactly. That <laughs> is your job. Intensity. And you just had one bad day at work. <laughs> right. That is the intensity of playing professional sports. That, but that's a great picture, Mike. Wow. I never that, thought about that analogy, but that's exactly how it would be. Or sometimes they might have, again, I've been, you know, around where I had a bad game and, and you know, there's 10 or 12 or 15 uh, people auditioning for his replacement on Monday. This happened Sunday. They got 15 guys in there Monday. They done threw them overnight on a plane. <laughs> <laughs> They're on Dang. the field at nine o'clock on the morning, Monday morning. That's crazy. <laughs> We're talking about the millions of dollars, and your product is on display every Sunday. You're judged how you do every Sunday, not a quarterly report. How did we do this quarter? Did we hit our, our sales numbers, our projections? Let's see if it shakes out next quarter. No, it's every week, every Sunday, we're judged to see how well we're coming along. And you as the individual, all that week of, of practice, and we're not even going to get into the strains of practice, but you're judged every Sunday as to how well you are fulfilling your role. That's nuts. Every player is graded every play, and you get an overall grade. If you're offensive lineman, defensive lineman, linebacker, corner, quarterback, whatever it is, they talk about public about the quarterback and all his statistics and data. But behind the scenes, every play is, every play is graded. Every player, that's whether it's a special teams play, offense, defense, is graded on every play, and you get a cumulative grade for that particular series, that game. Uh, and, and, you know, you can have serious conversations or you could, you know, get a new job. Um, and, wow. And, that, that, you know, and, just, component of it. and just to kind of circle back on some of, you know, the, um, the intensity of this and what we don't see, everyone's waiting in the room. Everyone's waiting for their name to be called. It, the, your, your agent should be even during the draft working the phones. That's, oh, that's yes. kind of, they're, they're, Agents having multiple conversations in the back room, background of the dream room, green room. Somebody gets drafted and the agent thinks it should have been their guy or they had a conversation with somebody that told them they were going to draft their guy and they're calling these people. No, but again, you, you have to have somebody that is in that loop, in that network. You know, you get a baseball agent or a basketball agent coming to the space 
and it's not the culture of football and mm -hmm. they don't, don't, don't understand it and they don't understand how it works so differently than other sports and again we are a commodity when you talk about football players more than any other sport right, right. one guy is, is is you know just a clog in the wheel unless they're a quarterback you know uh, mm -hmm. and you know you everybody's replaceable and even they're replaceable and they're always under the gun looking at some of these numbers first and, and, and you said if you're a quarterback maybe 15 to 20 million signing bonus to sign on the dotted well, 15, line so let me discount that so, let's say that i think last year 15 was the 15 and 16 was the was the top one okay now let's and discount don't know that what maybe, it is this year. maybe i'm it's not a, a quarterback defensive back outside linebacker and maybe my signing bonus is reggie is it fair to say maybe nine to ten million yes okay now look at this <laughs> Let's up say much. that I'm After I'm not a quarterback, defensive back, outside linebacker, first round. I'm looking at just the signing bonus alone being in, you know around let's say you know nine to ten million, and I slip. This is what kind of got me. I slipped to the second round, and it's something that my mm -hmm. agent could have prevented. I have now gone from let's say an average of ten million dollars signing bonus to a two and a half million dollar signing bonus. From yes, 10 to easy. 2. Easy. I'm pissed. I mean, <laughs> of course. You're pissed, you're disheartened, you're, 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 you're you know, going, bouncing off the walls. But <laughs> when they call you, you're happy to have been picked. Right. Right? Now you have an option to, opportunity to redeem yourself. <laughs> and you should probably fire the agent. Then. <laughs> you have an opportunity to redeem yourself. Right? <laughs> And that's where he, he really reveals himself. So, you, you know, uh, Reggie, this whole thing, I, it sounds like a, uh, a choreographed mess going on behind the scenes. It's, it's, it's things that you can control and there's things that you can't control. What's the old adage? Uh, I, I can give me the grace to, to uh, control the things that can control and, and, and not worry about the things I can't. Uh, that's right. the, the gist of it. You can't control certain things. You can control who you pick as an agent. You can control when you fire them. You can control what happens on the field to the best of your ability, right? Uh, there's certain things you can't control. You can't control personalities. I know a young man that they got traded from a team because he had a personality conflict with somebody, right? Mm -hmm. They just didn't like him. I don't know why. It doesn't matter why. It is what it is. We are all human beings and people. We, nobody gets along with everybody. And it's okay. Wow. <laughs> well, Reggie, now, folks, when you watch next year's draft or you go back and you and you analyze this past year's draft, uh, you know, my team, University of Texas, I think we only had two guys drafted this year. I mean, that's that that's embarrassing. Texas University of zero. Texas. Zero. 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 The last First I checked, time. we had we had two guys drafted, Reggie. One of them was a I punter. Thought, I thought, I thought, <laughs> so, a Texas a thing came on and said they had zero guys. They were embarrassed and humiliated and pissed the blank, the blank, the blank, the blank off. Um, guys, that is a, a, a that is the, the bedrock. That is the foundation. That is the home of real football. Yeah. <laughs> so, so for the University of Texas, that, 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 that since they're, they're, administration and coaching staff are not doing what they need to do because they are in the hot bed of talent yeah and not to have anyone drafted it's crazy that's horrible that's horrible well folks reggie thank you so much for joining us once again uh now guys go back review this past week's draft and now you got an idea as to potentially what might have happened and what's going on behind the scenes feel excited for those young men who got drafted let your heart break for those who slipped <laughs> and cheer for everyone who got picked throughout <laughs> the entire seven rounds because they're one of very, very few who have now made it to the big show. Reggie, thank you so much. Guys, hey, if you like this episode, please like, share, subscribe. And yes, if I pay attention to the comments and the thumbs, Reggie Grant will be back. <laughs> Thank you so very much, guys. Have an exceptional day.